Let's look at something that is a little bit sooner on the horizon. We have a metagame breakdown from the OCG. And I honestly was very surprised when I saw this breakdown. Enpi Dragons is taking 17.1% of the current OCG metagame. This is uh, February 23rd to 28th. It tabulates 187 top performing decks from across 29 tournaments. It's a decent amount of data, honestly. And Tenpai Dragon seems to be a relevant deck. Because this number is so large, I actually have the Tenpai cards up here. I want to revisit them real quick just for a couple minutes just to understand what's going on and what might make them so good in this environment. Because, I mean, they are almost up to par with Fire King. They have overtaken Pure Snake Eye and Voiceless Voice. So that is very impressive. When we read those cards on stream, it seemed to me like a solid blind second OTK strategy, somewhat given gimmicky but i wasn't expecting it to actually perform right i thought it was rogue solid like playable rogue deck not like hey i'm putting up 17 percent of the topping decks or something like that right all right here we go tenpai dragon deck builds are now running upwards of 22 hand traps what this hand trap heavy version of the deck is likely the dominant build going for oh god tenpai dragon could play the game of attrition against fire king and snake eye where both sides would throw hand traps at each other to disrupt their combos and until one side runs out of hand traps and the other side could combo off. Since Tenpai Dragon has much more compact core package, they could allocate more slots to hand traps. Brimming Sangan Manor has a continuous effect that makes Fire Dragon monsters you control become unaffected by your opponent. Activate this effect during your main phase, which makes it much more tricky to disrupt Tenpai Dragon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13. Yeah, this is 22 hand traps. This is disgusting. Okay, I have one question. I don't know if any one of you is familiar with Tenpai yet. Is this a blind second deck or is it going first? It goes second. Okay. So I will say one thing. I thought that Snake Eye format was looking kind of promising. However, I will also say this current development of everyone is just playing 18 plus hand traps in the TCG already. I find that incredibly annoying. Unfortunately, it looks like decks like Tenpai Dragon and Legacy of Destruction in general will further lean into this concept. This kind of gameplay is actually so annoying. Exactly this sort of behavior that they're describing in this text, right? I'm not looking to play a game where both sides would throw hand traps at each other to disrupt their combos until one side runs out of hand traps and the other side could combo off. This has nothing to do with Tenpai. This is specifically what's my issue with the current TCG format as well. For this particular build, I don't know if this is Tenpai's fault or more like Snake Eye's fault because I feel like this is an issue maybe that Snake Eyes provoke this behavior, if what I'm saying makes sense. Snake Eye is the kind of deck where I'm looking at it and I'm like, I could try to deal with what the end board is, or I could try to stop the end board from happening by using hand traps. That second task of dealing with the end board is like so much harder than just like impermash them right? I do understand why the format is taking this direction is what I'm trying to say. And if that's the case, honestly, if there's no other solution to this format, that's going to be a no-no. I think it's going to be a bad format if that's what it's all about. It's not that many cards, but I want to remind myself, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can take a Sangin spell trap from your deck and either add it to your hand or set it. You can only use this effect once per turn. You take no battle damage from battles involving your dragon fire monsters once per turn during the battle phase. Quick effect synchro. Okay. On summon, add a spell trap during battle phase quick effect synchro all right not too bad tenpai dragon fadora if this card is normal or special or at the start of the damage step if a monster battles you can target a level four lower fire dragon in the grave special summon it you can only use this effect once per turn your fire dragons cannot be destroyed by battle once per turn quick effect synchro all right and here we have tenpai dragon zongdora once per turn during the battle phase you can quick effect immediately after this effect resolves synchro summon using this card you control you can only use effect once per turn if you control a fire dragon special summon this card from your your hand at the start of the damage step if a monster battles you can special level four or lower fire from the deck except tenpai dragon's long door okay i can see why they would call this one with black goat laughs because it's pretty good oh this is the only tuner as well okay this is the field spell brimming sang and manor fire dragons are unaffected by activated effects during main phase one during your main phase you can add a tenpai dragon from your deck to your hand then this card one card you can only use this effect once per turn if this card is destroyed during the battle phase you can target a dragon synchro its attack becomes doubled 
I think you're trying to pop this one with Trident Dragon to make it big and can attack multiple times. I'm pretty sure that's the plan. There's another spell that isn't a Tenpai card, but uh, Sang and Kaiman. If this card was activated outside of the battle phase, you only get one of the effects. If it's during the battle phase, you get both. Add a level four lower fire from deck to hand or a special of fire from your hand. Okay. So if you're in the battle phase, you can add and then special the same thing. So that's a pretty good card. We have Trident Dragon, obviously, and we have Sangin Rice Dragon Biden Dragon. If this card is Synchro Summon, target a Fire Dragon in your grave, special summon it, also can't special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except Dragon. You can only use this effect once per turn. If three or more attacks have been declared this turn, quick effect, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. Then you can destroy one spell trap on the field. You can only use this effect once per turn. This one is a level seven and it was a tuner. And then we have Super Dragon Transcend Dragon. If this card is Synchro Summoned, you can change all monsters to attack. All opponent's monsters must attack if able. Also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects during the battle phase. If three or more attacks have been declared, you can special summon this card from the graveyard, then you can destroy one card on the field. Okay. One spare duel, not turn. Uh, one, oh, are both ones per duel? Oh, they're both. The revive is ones per duel. Okay. So those are the cards. Once again, I'm reading these and I'm like, okay, they got some cool battle phase tricks up their sleeves. I just found it hard to imagine that they would actually like be able to do this through boards right that was my problem in my head with this deck it's like okay if you're gonna make this a classic blind second otk over your board kind of thing then how are you dealing with your opponent's board i guess this sort of approach that they're using here is your opponent is not gonna have a board you're playing literally 24 non-engine plus prosp this deck is more non-engine than engine like it's just like you're trying to stop your opponent the hardest way possible and then just otk them the other question is realistically do do you have a plan for when your opponent just says after game one, yep, you go first? Seals pass, baby? I mean, unironically, yeah, that's probably it. They play seals. You just go seals and pass on a bunch of hand traps. I guess that could work. Some are playing heat wave. Heat wave could also work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Hieratic Seals plus Kaiser Coliseum is pretty nasty. It's a little bit tricky because like if you win game one and do you expect your opponent to make you go first every single time, right? Like what's the meta in that situation? Because sometimes maybe your opponent's still going to go first. It would be really bad to draw like Heat Wave going second or Kaiser Coliseum. I just want to try and understand what's going on here. I want to see how it deals with a Snake Eye board or like if they're actually just throwing hand traps at each other. Look at them activating their rare wanted, by the way. Cringe, uh, poor duelist. I think they're hitting them with the shifter chain maxi technology. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. They even had called by. Oh lord. They're the best duelists to have ever touched the card game. <laughs> dude, no. Snake Eyes players down bad. Dude, they got... What was their hand? It's Effect Veiler, Imperm Ash, and a starter, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no, did you see that? They got... Oh my god, they're the best. What the hell? They got Imperm Ash, Veiler, and a Dragon Monster. Dude. Dude, they're an anti-meta Giga Chat. They don't even know the field spell. What do you put here? Like, Birch? No, Poplar. Okay. Pass. Okay, so they summoned the Reborn, dude. Oh, they drew the Fire Guy as well. They're the best. But, like, unironically, you guys have said earlier, like, the deck is immune to hand traps, but, like, it's only immune to hand traps if you draw the field spell, right? Because they don't have it. Like, they could get hand trapped in this situation, right? Kinda? Okay. You need, like, three stops to beat two Tenpies? Yeah. Okay, attack, special, grab the thingy. Synchro Shokan. Let's go. Up. 
Revive. Why aren't they just surrendering? Isn't it one at this point? I mean, I don't think they know what all the cards do. Because they, they've picked up a bunch of them and read them. I think they're just trying to figure out what this deck does for the future games. Which makes sense. Summon Trident Dragon! <laughs> Thrilling gameplay. Dude, with another rare bonfire. Poor Kick W. Imagine, imagine cheap bonfire. Could not be us. Seven minutes, I wonder what's gonna happen. <laughs> Fair enough. It's super. Okay. Regardless. They have shifter again? No, they have maxi again. Oh my god, dude. Imperm the poplar. Alright. Ooh. I like that. Dude, he's got maxi and effect veiler, man. <laughs> oh god dude nah don't ever show me double maxi when i talents you dude oh good lord well he's taking the one starter away why did you play into this maxi knowing they need to top deck a starter card gg no droll either Oh my god. Yeah, enjoy your maxi, dude. You're dead. This is like infinite damage, right? Like, how much damage is this? Like, theoretically. 30k plus? That's insane. This is the full, full combo, right? That makes the level 10 synchro. And then you can make Trident Dragon to pop the level 10 synchro and the field spell. Double your Trident Dragon's attack. Attack three times with it. And then the other level 10 synchro can also come back from the graveyard again, right? So the level 10 synchro also attacks twice, right? Nah, that's nasty. The little Little dragons are not hard ones per turn. Oh, can you quick synchro as often as you can revive them? Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, God. Okay, yeah. Oh, my lord. Okay. Whew. Did Trident Dragon go up? You guys are talking about Trident Dragon right now. Oh, no. I have one, I'm pretty sure. I have exactly one for a random Edison deck. Yeah. Surely it's going to get reprinted. Ultra rare. Mm-hmm. Ultimate rare. Mm-hmm. Whew. I hope they reprint this. I hope they do. Long story short, this deck is better than I thought. Because there's always a difference between reading the cards for the first time and then actually seeing them in action, right? Sometimes it's hard to imagine a deck in practice. That was astounding of how much it can do with just one card in the battle phase, right? Like they go into the battle phase with just like one of the guys and they just do so much with that. Pretty strong, I want to say. White is OTK on its own. Yeah, it's kind of wild. And I think that explains why it's also performing in this format, right? Right? I think the reason why this deck is performing, it's got the ideal circumstances in the format right now because Snake Eyes as a deck is like really powerful, but if you just hand trap it to death, they just pass. And if you have a deck that can literally just OTK with one card, that's pretty nasty. Is this the first blind second deck we've seen in a while? We've seen blind second decks in the past, but they would mostly be like gimmicks. And that's what I kind of was expecting this to be as well. It doesn't seem like a gimmick. I'm gonna be honest with you. It seems pretty efficient. The mirror seems terrible. Everything about this gameplay is terrible. Don't get me wrong. Only because I'm saying the deck looks strong, I'm not saying it looks good or fun. I guess if you're playing it yourself, it's kind of fun. But like the overarching idea of like, hey, I'm gonna throw hand traps at my opponent and then just resolve one card to win the game is pretty much exactly the same gameplay that I was criticizing of like Math Mech, for example. Like Math Mech is pretty much the same, but like slightly different. And Snake Eye is turning in a very similar direction. Kind of a segue, I guess, talking about this sort of hand trap format and Snake Eye thing, because I do believe even though Tenpai is just another deck like this, I think this is a Snake Eye issue at the moment, right? I think Snake Eyes is what's forcing the game to be so hand trap heavy. If you are trying to play in this current format, this this is true for both the TCG and the OCG, and I think that's a very interesting moment in time 
because OCG and TCG are usually never close to each other in terms of the formats, like not very close at least. At the moment, I would argue that they are as close as they haven't been in, in a long, long time, simply because the OCG is ahead by like one and a half core sets or something like that, but it doesn't really matter because the most relevant cards are out in both formats. Like Legacy of Destruction, I think besides the Tenpai stuff, doesn't have many relevant things. So for the most part, we are in a very, very similar situation together with the TCG and the OCG and Master Duel as well. Yeah, no, you're right, chat. Like Master Duel is also somewhat similar. I've said this before. I think Snake Eyes is an archetype that... I thought was very promising when it first came out, when I saw what it did. Um, promising in the sense that obviously we knew it was going to be good, but I also thought it could be a quite enjoyable format. There's two major issues with it that I have at the moment. One of them, we can't really do anything about it anymore, and that's the pricing. The pricing, I think, is horrible for the current format. I think the second issue, issue that I have, I think Snake Eyes, if both players get to do their thing, is actually quite the fun mirror match. It's quite grindy. It's quite enjoyable also to watch or to play. However, I think the current approach that everyone is taking in the format is we're playing 18 hand traps, so you don't actually get to play the game. It doesn't matter if you're playing the most interactive engine in the game. If everyone's goal is to not let you play the game with your engine, then that's not going to matter, right? Honestly, I am pretty disappointed by that. The developments that the format has taken in the last couple of weeks from the competitive aspect it makes sense to approach the format like this but i am still annoyed by it i'll say it again if this ends up being the only way to really approach the format i don't think it's going to be very enjoyable